Hi class, uh, welcome to immunology and biotechnology online. Okay, uh, so for the next three weeks, you are going to see me a little bit in this type of an intro video for each week's topic or each small part section of the video. Um, and I've been debating what kind of clothes I should wear. Uh, for this type of video, and uh, instead of wearing a dress shirt, I figure uh, you know something about like more casual clothes should be fine. So uh, this is perhaps your first time seeing me in clothes that are street clothes. Okay. Um. Anyhow. Uh, so today or this week, uh, we will be talking about hypersensitivities. Okay. All right, without further talking, let's go to our lecture. Well, guys, so let's begin this week's um, topics, which is hypersensitivity. Now, we didn't get to do it before um, all these things happen, uh, but it's okay. Our uh, schedule is quite flexible, so we just go through uh, week by weeks of material. Now, this week's uh, hypersensitivity actually are a uh, is quite long of a chapter. Uh, well, this starting this week, I'll uh, name this according to the week. So this is uh, week one closure due to COVID nineteen, aka week nine of our original semester. All right. So let's look at our objectives. Now, the first objective is to stay awake. All right, guys, stay awake and try to watch the whole video. Now, I try to, I'm trying to truncate this whole entire lecture. You see, like, there are 90 some slides there. I'm trying to um, cut it up into at least two to three small chunks so that it's a little bit more digestible, in my opinion. Yes, learning is like eating. Too much will make you feel sick. All right, so the other objectives, well, let's look at it um well i'm not going to read it out loud for you guys you guys can read it um read it again these are tied into the overall learning objective for the course according to the syllabus let's begin our lecture with a little bit introductions of uh this particular topic all right, so the um, immune system is really here to protect ourselves and the protective functions of it really relies on recognition of uh, cell from non-self, okay, and recognition of pathogen molecules as foreign. Now, however, besides some uh, infectious agents, human comes into daily contact with numerous, numerous other molecules that are equally foreign but do not threaten our health under normal circumstances. Or another way we should say it should not trigger inflammation or adaptive immunity as we have learned. All right? now, and many of these foreign substances are derived from plants and animals that we eat, okay? or are present in the environment where we live, we work, and we play, okay? It is everywhere. Now, here are we going to define some of the term uh, for this topic. First of it is allergy reactions, okay? Let's see if my pen is working properly here. Let's change to a pen, all right? So, allergic reactions all right so allergy really allergy is this word uh, it's kind of fyi information it derived from greek meaning altered reactivities all right so the term really uh there's not that important uh what it means is that it's uh causing you having a overreactions okay overreactions of the immune system to something that are normally harmless harmless to yourself okay and the idea of these um, allergens triggered response uh, can have a uh, wide range of different um, severity okay someone could be as you know as simple as having a hay fever versus someone to have a anaphylactic shock okay so uh, that those could be very very serious now it appeared to be somewhat of a 
、um, prevalence. Okay, it's not quite common. Uh, things around at least in the United States. Now, it's a little bit fun fact that、uh, about myself. Really, ah,、uh, before I come to the U.S., you know, to、uh, you know, when I was sixteen, seventeen years old, I've rarely heard, ah,、um, you know, rarely heard anyone have allergy, ah,、uh, you know, you know, of something, anything, um, but. And allergies, it's a relatively new idea to me,、uh, you know, for that these years. And、uh, unfortunately, these couple years, I started having to develop some serious seasonal allergy as well. So I've been kind of having sneezes and you know some dry cough、uh, for six months now. Now,、uh, fortunately, it's not like recent development. Otherwise, I should probably go tested for COVID nineteen, well, which is not really a joke,、uh, in my opinion, at this point. Now. Um. So the prevalence, you know, according to some sources, saying that it's approximately nine to sixteen percent of our populations, uh, about what fifty, sixty million people, I guess, uh, that have the allergies. Okay, but on the other hand, you know, this number perhaps is really underreported. I've never got diagnosed with any type of allergy, but I do take and. Antihistamine drugs that we learned in self care、uh, last semester、uh, every day now almost. So,、uh, am I in that nine to six percent, sixteen percent, or ten to forty percent?、Uh, this is you know kind of you know a big question that we、uh, no one have a good answers to it. Now there's appearance of、uh, some type of an increase incidence that is happening、uh, with this allergy, like. Uh, like I said, I didn't have allergy when I, well,、uh, that was sixteen, seventeen years ago. Now I'm starting having some type of allergy、uh, to the environment. So that is something、uh, a little bit, you know. Again, there's a question that we don't know what's going on. All right, so allergens, okay, allergens comes in many forms, and they are, you know, really different for different people. Okay, ah,、uh, well. Like I said, I when I was a little bit younger, I think I was a little bit more allergic, or slightly allergic to dust. Okay, things of that nature, or dirt. But now that I've been here for long in the U.S. for long, I feel like I'm more allergic to, uh, you know, things that out of the the na- nature. Okay, things like grass. Um, you know, pollens or or pe-、uh, you know, flower pollens of that nature. Okay, so it could change actually. Um, and really, a lot of these、um, allergens are、uh, going into your body through inhalations. Okay,、uh, you know we have、um, like for example in this graph here, we are、um, really showing you the、uh, you know pointing out the point、uh, plant pollens. And it could also be dangers, okay, from、uh, domesticated animals, i.e., cats and dogs that you have at home. Now,、um, dangers are not hairs or furs of animal, okay? They're actually the old skin scales that are being constantly shed by your little cutie cat and you know. Cutie dogs, okay, ah,、uh, just like us, right? We sh- we shed our skin, okay, the keratin, ah,、uh, layer, okay, on top of our skin, it it constantly comes off. So does animals, okay? They have these things comes off, and they are referred to as dander, okay. Um, so these are ah,、uh, you know, primarily you know allergens that that find from those pets. All、right. Other things are、uh, mold spores. Okay, it can also be uh, those uh, common uh, allergens that you find in your household. And dust mite. Okay, dust mite.、Uh, it, you know you've heard of it many times here. It's a little bit a、uh, uh, a small, a small, a big. Dust mite. Okay, yeah, depends on how you look at it. Now this dust mite, uh, you know, seems to be harboring uh, along some beddings, uh, carpets. All right, so those are um, um, that is you know potentially, uh, causing the allerg allergens or the allergy attack. Now particularly with their feces. Okay, actually you're not technically allergic to the to the whole insect by itself. It's really what they they. They, they, their business. Okay, it's what they, 
come out from their bottom okay um uh so that's that's all the um common types of um allergens okay um and these um these allergens, right? What happened? It can stimulate the adaptive immune uh, response, okay? And, you know, through some of these uh, processes that we've talked about uh, previously, such as you know, antigen presenting and T cell activations and all things like that, okay? Now uh, there are other examples here on the graph. You don't need to like memorize it a lot of it, but you, it's kind of uh, common so right like uh, injections uh so this is also a common uh you know things that cause uh, allergy attacks you know wops okay they inject venoms okay i've stunned by wops one time uh what i did i just immediately um you know took a um you know, benadryl that's all i had uh, around me so i mean it knocked me out to sleep but i don't know probably overkilled but <laughs> that's what it is drugs okay drugs okay it it's it, it is it is does it remind you something of a nightmare okay in your um last module in your pt okay right anything that cause anaphylactic you know it, you you lose points right okay now um and uh, therapeutic protein so we're going to talk about therapeutic proteins uh in another class okay the gem module when we talk about uh, those antibody drugs later on all right um now food allergies all right big 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 things okay food allergies uh peanuts okay one of those common things shellfish one of those common things all right uh you heard of it you've heard of it many many times perhaps you have it a lot of uh you know basically nuts uh peanut uh, almond things like that sesame i've heard of that too um uh, and uh you know some people also allergic to eggs okay so that is more of a serious problem people allergic to eggs need to be careful when they are getting um injections for immunizations okay and contact dermatitis or, or contact uh, material things common things poison ivies nickel coins okay people can be allergic to those uh, now these usually manifest on your skin because you are touching it right so we, we will talk about it in the later uh, portion of this lectures okay Alright, so we spent a lot of time doing some introductions here. Now there are even more introductions that we are getting into the meat, okay? So there is a uh, special classification called the uh, Coombs and Gels classifications of reactions, okay? Basically, this classification defined all types of hypersensitivity reactions into four uh, categories, okay? Four categories. Um, they are caused by different effectors, mechanisms of the adaptive immune okay here is the uh, rundown list of the overview okay rundown list of the overview of different types type one it's uh, usually a immediate actions caused by mostly IgE and mast cells type two on the other hand is B cell IgG cytotoxic effect type three is precipitated immune complex and type four is delayed by T cell mediations. All right, so we will go through all of these types in great detail uh, in this entire uh, topic there. So don't worry too much to uh, it at this point. All right, type one. Okay, type one. Uh, it involves IgE and mast cell. Okay, IgE and mast cell. Okay, uh, now what happened with in this type one hypersensitivity is that the allergen binds to the um, IgE. All right, okay, binds to the IgE, and the FC region of IgE binds to the mast cell. Mast cell. All right, so let me see if I can have a figure. All right, there is the the figure that, that can do a little bit better explanations. Okay, so we have IgE, okay, that are binding to the allergens, okay, as indicated by what I circled here. All right, and the FC regions, okay, we're pointing it here, that are binding to the mast cells, okay. Right, does that sound familiar? Yes, it. I think it should be, right? I kind of talked about it uh, during our allergy mat in self-care. So uh, most of you 
hopefully remember uh, so we're going to into a little bit more greater detail of course in this uh, in this course okay so uh, once it's bind uh, to the mast cell in a nutshell story here that it will trigger mast cells to degranulate uh, degranulation degranulate all right and release uh, inflammatory inflammatory mediators such as what all right you know it start with the H start with the H it's H I S right histamine histamine all right histamine uh, is one of those uh, inflammatory mediators all right okay now these uh, type 1 uh, sensor hypersensitivity it's uh, you know commonly precipitate or um, you know caused by inhaled particles pollens dangerous that might that's really what you know we think of when we talk about allergies a lot of the time okay seasonal allergies particularly All right there are uh, you know what happened is that the severity can range you know can range from very mild symptoms mucus secretions where it can be treated with over-the-counter medication that we learn about or it could be as bad as serious as anaphylaxations okay which could be very very bad okay all right all right common allergies of uh okay all right so all right go moving on to the type 2 all right type 2 hypersensitivity here now here the keyword is b cells and igg mediated I also have cytotoxicity. So type 2 reactions involve allergens binding covalently, okay, covalently, okay, to the cell surface component of human cells. So this is you know, perhaps the only time, all right, so you see a, some type of a covalent bond and it is initiated by small molecule for the most, uh, most part of it, okay. Basically, well, it tricks the system into thinking the cells, it's becoming formed, okay? So now, now you have a cell here, and you have a small molecule, I don't know, like this is benzene or something, that are covalently attached to the cells, right? It will look different than your normal cells. So this did become a bad guy, this is still a good cell and then uh so you recognize it as a foreign cells and because of the modified structure okay this is this is extra on their cell surface all right so the b cells will respond okay to this type of foreign uh bodies okay and you know subsequently later uh you know it lead to productions of igg igg and it will uh you know cause you know you know, destroy the cell by complement activations phagocytosis and you know leading to uh, the cell destructions all right and one of the common examples for this type of a type 2 allergy attack is could be uh, penicillin okay remember penicillin is a small molecule drug with a beta latin main ring all these now uh why well, won't you know ask you the drug particularly you know in great detail but here now you know uh, okay you've been haunted perhaps by these drug allergy now you know the underlying mechanisms of or, or reasons of what's going on with this type of allergy right is that great did i make you feel better or feel worse all right okay now moving on we're still in the introduction now we'll dive into each one of those new uh, of these hypersensitivity later on all right if you have already you know take a quick look you know on those slides that i posted earlier on uh, here again we're giving some introductions of each one of those here type three okay it is uh you know you know main keyword is precipitations okay of a immune complex what this immune complex is is a um antigen a n t i g e n antigen slash i g g complex all right so soluble uh water uh soluble uh, protein antigens but bind to igg all right and uh, specifically you know usually it's in the wall of blood vessels or uh, in the alveolite of the lung all right so 
right? These immune complex, you know, are especially good at activating the, the complement, okay, phycocytic cells and inflammatory responses, okay? And non-human protein used is therapeutic, therapeutically can produce this response, right? So we kind of learned, uh, mentioned it in, uh, in our last week lecture or the week before actually, uh, no, actually a long time ago, but we kind of tested it, this idea, right? Serum sickness, okay, where you are receiving a, a uh, serum from an animal, right? So that could lead to this type 3 um, hypersensitivity. What else uh, can you think of it potentially? Um, uh, perhaps this is in the old days. Okay, now uh, one of the therapeutic proteins or small peptides or hormones, all right, is start with an I. <coughs> Sorry about that. N S U L I and insulin. Insulin these days are produced by recombinant recombinant proteins, okay, we'll talk about re, uh, protein recombinations uh, in our biotechnology chapter later on. Now, uh, these days, all insulins are, you know, human, human insulins, okay, made by uh, cells that are specially engineered. In the old days, all right, what about in the old days? Before we have these recombinant proteins, insulins are taken directly from our little friends, all right, little friends here. What is this, little friends? All right, from our little pig, okay. <laughs> and also, potentially, our... Little cow, okay. Does it look like cow? <laughs> anyway, uh, from our little, pa uh, you know, little... Uh, farm animals, okay, when they're old days, in the old days. So when you inject insulin from a uh, pig and from cow, okay, the chances are it could induce uh, hypersensitivity. All right, so those are the two uh, common examples. All right, here is a table, uh, you know, giving you a little bit graphical summaries, okay. This is I adopted from the book I showed Mr. Tan there. Um, of what I just learned about. So this is a very, very good quick overview, overview of, uh, no, review, okay, review of what I just talked about in terms of type 1, type 2, and type 3, uh, and, you know, the main route of activation, sorry, okay. All right, so uh, what is common in type 1, type 2, and type 3, they are all antibodies, right? We have type 1, that is I, G, what, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, what, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I, G, E, okay. Type 2 and type 3, what is it? What is it? It is I, G, G, right? Both of them. So both types are uh, mediated by antibodies. All right, now type four. Type four is different because it has a different color. <laughs> All right, so type four is different because it is caused by products of antigen-specific effector T cells. Remember what effector T cell is? Effector T cell is uh what? C. D eight T cells and C D four TH cells. Right? Okay. So those are our effective T cells. T cell mediated. Now remember T cell they're in the branch of acquired immune immune systems and these things takes time okay it has a delayed response okay it doesn't happen right away now when you inhale some type of a pollen into your nose uh you know ladies when you receive a rose bush 
uh, not rose bush, <laughs> a couple of rose uh, that are presented to you, then you sniff it. If you have allergy, you immediately sneeze. Okay, right? That's very quick, almost, almost like instantaneous. But type four, it's delayed. So you're allergic to beautiful flowers. Unfortunately, it's not type four. All right. So that is a big hint. So what are some of these things that are delayed? All right. So we're jumping down a little bit to the uh. The page here, poison ivies, all right, venoms, insect bite, all right, those are not uh, immediately uh, happening to, in most cases, in a lot of cases, it takes a little time, all right. So here uh, is an example that um, they are primarily uh, caused or due to actions of CD4 TH1 helper cells, okay, all right, and um, and here is the second type all right some type of the uh, type 4 reactions are actually produced by cytotoxic cd8 t cells okay those are all t cells all right so there are some of the details listed here what it really means is that there are some type of a small reactions a reactive lipid soluble molecules okay that go through that goes through pass through your cell membranes and bond covalently okay so this is lipid soluble uh, molecules mostly we are still uh, talking about small molecules okay that can go through our lipid bilayer do you remember lipid bilayer all right so this is the lipid bilayer there all right, so smaller molecule goes through it. Right, okay, so uh, the small molecule that are lipid soluble go through it, uh, cell membrane and bond covalently to intracellular uh, proteins. Okay, something, something inside the cell change. Okay, so it in a way that it's almost like is it like virus infected or something? You know, you get some type of abnormal proteins, you know, being present in this case. So the CD8 T cells recognize it and you know take care of it okay all right so this figure here is uh, again this table is to summarizes what can be happen what can happen now here is a sub special case I didn't talk about earlier on in the previous slides so we we talked about TH1 and you know it could be happening by you know some of the uh, venoms and like that sort of toxic t cells which could be related to contact dermatitis poison ivy okay poison ivy and here we, we skipped this column in our, our previous slides so we'll talk more about this this column in later on but this column really is uh you know again related to uh things that we've exposed to okay uh asthma and some of the allergic ran rhinitis uh, that we talked about so there are some type of a real uh, uh, you know chronic conditions there okay all right it is question time all right welcome back to this screen here but I have my mic along you know holding my mic with me and um, so we are going to play a little game in terms of uh, these questions. All right, so here is a style that I presented as looks like a millionaire. Who wants to be a millionaire style? Okay, questions. Um, for those of you that are, you know, kind of young, you know, way younger than me, that uh, they, you probably don't know what who wants to be a millionaire is. Your parents should know, okay? Your parents should know. Not, not that I'm SOS your parents, I'm just saying, when I know about this, I was a teenager, so your parents probably in their twenties at that time. Okay. Anyway, so who wants to be a millionaire? And uh, you know, I figure this is a pretty cool screen to give out questions. All right, you know, very very simple assessment type of a question to review our um, our lecture material. Like right, so, here is a one hundred dollar questions. Okay, this is a pretty simple question. Right, so let's look at the questions. Which type? I don't look at my screen. Which type of sensitive hypersensitivity is not caused by antibodies? Okay, this one should be quite easy. Okay, 
A, type 1, B, type 2, C, type 3, and D, type 4. Okay? If you are paying attention in the last 5 or 10 minutes or so, you should know this answer very easily. We'll give you 5 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Right, anyway, I count a 5 seconds there. Okay, <clears throat> so what is the final answer? Shout it out. Okay, now I can't hear you, but I assume you pick the correct answer is D. Right? Type 4 is not mediated by antibodies, okay? It's by effector T cells uh, of all types, okay? CD1, CD, uh, CD4, CD4, TH1 helper cell, TH2 helper cell, as well as CD8 cytoplasmic T cell. They can all play a role in type 4 hypersensitivity. And we'll go into uh, dive into the mechanism in the uh, later part of the video or later part of this lecture. All right? So I've realized this video has already been 26, almost half hours, okay? And it's good time to take a break, okay? Let's break it here, and we will come back to the second part of this hypersensitivity lecture. See you in the next video.